Hey everybody, this is Ron LaPlante. I'm currently in Perry, Florida. Uh, the date is 2 July 2016. I'd like to try and uh, kind of outline what's going on with me. It's kind of hard to do it in like little uh, messages, text messages, Facebook messages, whatever. But I want to try and make a video that maybe I can post to YouTube and then link to Facebook that kind of outlines everything a little bit better. So anyway, a uh, little background. Um, I recently retired from the Army. Uh, end of April was my retirement. Um, the retirement process itself was actually pretty much a fucking nightmare. Uh, it took no less than seven different packets submitted for me to finally get to the point where I could retire because paperwork would get lost. Uh, it'd have to be redone and then due to time frames, you know, like submit your packet no less than nine months out, no more than 12 months out from your desired date. Uh, I had to keep pushing the date back and pushing the date back and pushing the date back. So I kind of made planning uh, my retirement pretty crappy for for my family and I. Well, anyway, uh, fast forward a bit. It looked like it was finally going to go through. My wife and I were looking online uh, for places to retire to, like to move to. I wanted to go someplace nice and quiet, out of the way, be away from people so I could just relax because I'm not really much of a people person. Um, so anyway, uh, my wife found this house and, uh, well, it's a, it's a trailer, whatever, in Perry, Florida on almost six acres. Uh, it, it had been, uh, foreclosed on by the bank. So, so we decided, yeah, let's do that. Oh, back in, uh, In 2010, when I came back from my third deployment from Iraq, uh, my wife was actually able to save enough money to put a down payment on a car that I wanted, like my dream car type thing. It was a, it was a 2010 brand new, never been driven, brand new 2010 uh, Dodge Charger SRT8. Had all the options I wanted, like everything. It was perfect. Beautiful car. I loved it. Uh, well, last, last year, in 2015, I only had like a year or more to go to pay this thing off. Um, I said, hell, you know what? I'll sell it. I'll sell this car so we can go, so we can have the money to put down on, on this place so we can all be happy. So that's what I did. And, and God damn, we did not turn out to be all that happy. So anyway, okay. Um, it was sometime in October. We went and signed the paperwork for this place, uh, with the realty company. We came down here. We actually stayed the night. There was no power, no nothing, but we wanted to check it out. And it was actually the first time I had been down here. My wife had seen it prior, but after I signed the paperwork was the first time I actually came. Cause I, hell, I don't really care. As long as it's somewhere out of the way, I was good. And, and it was, and I loved it at first. Thought it was awesome. Um, the next morning when I woke up, I went outside and I was, I was shooting my pistol a bit because it's allowed here. You can shoot on your property. So I thought that was total badassery. So I went out shooting for a while. Uh, 
while I was shooting, I heard someone yelling and yelling and yelling. So I walked out. I walked out front to see, like, where the yelling was coming from. And it was a lady that lived in the house in front of us. Well, she was just she was just yelling, hey, who's shooting, who's shooting? So I, I went up to her. I introduced myself. I told her, hey, hey, sorry about that. Like, we just uh, bought the place. We stayed the night last night. Um, we're we're going to be moving in in the next, like, couple months. Uh, I'm about to retire from the military. So I talked to her a little bit. So, yeah, I'm at Fort Benning. Uh, about to retire. We just bought this place. And then found out from her that uh, th this whole area, uh, it was like a 20-acre or so uh, property, I guess, owned by all these different family members. Well, I guess one of the family members couldn't pay for this specific portion, which is why it got foreclosed on. So, so we thought, okay, well, cool, if we can get along with, with these people here, I mean, that'd be great. We'd have, like, neighbors we'd know and, I don't know, no outside bullshit going on, really. <clears throat> well, all right, fast forward a bit more. I, well, I went back to Benning, of course. I continued going to work, doing... Well, hell, doing my job and the retirement stuff that was that was going on, briefings and all that bullshit. Um, uh, my wife actually moved down here before I did. I was still at Benning in housing, and uh, I had to clear housing and stuff myself. But but she wanted to get down here uh, with our daughter so she could be enrolled in school and start the school year here. Well, no, it wasn't to start the school year. I think it was just so she could get back into school. Yeah, sorry. Not very good at this shit. I'm doing it off the top of my head, so bear with me. Um, anyway, my wife came down before I did. I was still at Benning. Uh, I did come down a couple times while I was still at Benning before I was out, like on... Uh, on transition leave, I came down to drop off some stuff, like bring stuff to my wife, like the deep freezer, stuff like that. Anyway, it was on one of those days. It was, uh, uh, it was February. I don't remember which day. The 16th of February, maybe, or something, is the first time the Taylor County Sheriff's Department showed up out here. And they were asking me about if I knew anything about four-wheelers. And I said no. And they said, well, wow, we found some four-wheelers. And there's marks that lead all the way, like, back here to this area. And I said, okay, cool, yeah, Um can't help you. Well, that was the first time. And then later, it turned in to all this shit. I'm going to try and show on the video. Like, so if anyone wants to, like, pause it and look at the paperwork, hopefully you can. I really don't know. Really don't care, I guess. I don't give a fuck. I just want to get the... I want to get the story out there. So... This is why I am still on 2 July in Perry, Florida. My oldest son is still at Fort Benning, living there, working there. My youngest son, I just dropped off the other day in West Palm Beach to live uh, with his girlfriend's family. And my wife and daughter are all the way up in Michigan, living there, like done with this place, never to come back. 
because she was so freaked out by uh, the stuff that's gone on here and didn't feel safe. So anyway, here's why I'm still here. I'll do the best I can with this camera shit. All right, let's see. Okay, anyway, like just to cut to the chase. Uh I've been I've been charged with I've been charged with two counts grand theft motor vehicle, felonies, uh, felony count criminal mischief and a misdemeanor count of littering. So Uh, I ended up getting arrested. They, this is uh, this is the discovery packet sent by the state to my my attorney. Um, has all the stuff in it. Uh, 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 here's the. Well, these are the charges: grand theft, motor vehicle stuff, other stuff. Uh, this is the the narrative and shit. Uh, Trying to get closer. All right, and I'll just read it and make my comments during. So, this was done by uh, Deputy Trace James of Taylor County Sheriff's Department, and he writes. In reference to this case, I was dispatched to road number two off of Strickland Bridge Road in reference to some found property. Upon arrival, I observed a black utility trailer, which was approximately 20 feet in length, front first into the Spring Warrior Creek. It looked as if someone had pushed the trailer in the creek by using the back of the trailer to push against. While waiting for... The tow truck, I observed something else in the water, but couldn't make out what it was. Once the sun came up, I could tell it was a four-wheeler. I later observed two tires in the rear rear end of the four-wheeler, approximately seven feet away from the trailer. At approximately 10.49 hours, Ricky Bobby's, yep, no shit. I just said that, and that's true. Ricky Bobby's Towing Company had arrived to remove the trailer from the creek. When he arrived, I observed what looked like gouges in the middle of the road from a jack, like the one on the front of the trailer that was attached. Okay. While Ricky was removing the trailer, I observed another four-wheeler in the creek approximately six foot to the right of the first. Ricky removed the trailer that was black in color, approximately six foot to the right, uh, to the right of the first, uh, blah, 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 blah. Removed the trailer, had some serial numbers, took out fucking two four-wheelers, had some fucking serial numbers. <clears throat> Upon getting the four wheelers on the trailer on dry land, I was then able to determine by the serial numbers that the four wheelers had not been reported stolen. I also ran the serial numbers on the trailer and it too also not reported stolen or was also not reported stolen. I then followed the gouges that were in the middle of the road onto Spring Warrior Road and onto Ma Dixon Road. At that point, I followed the gouges to a dirt road off of Ma Dixon. At the end of the dirt road was a small residential-like area. There were three homes in the area that was occupied. I think he meant that were occupied, but whatever. Before I entered the residential-like area, I observed a maroon SUV coming out of the drive, so I stopped and spoke with her. Her name was Rachel LaPlante. That was my wife, taking my daughter to school. She stated she observed a man filling in holes in the dirt road that morning at around 0800 hours. 
She stated he had a beard and a shovel in his hand. Uh, she completed a sworn statement that uh, said the same. And then he went to one of the first residents here and talked to Jacob S. Connor, who stated that he observed a large trailer with two red four-wheelers on it being pulled by a truck passing by their house. Connor completed a sworn written statement. I then went to the second house and spoke with Megan James, who stated she hadn't seen or heard anything about some damn trailer four-wheelers, then drove to the third residence, which was mine, and spoke with me. Because I had come down here, unfortunately, that morning, early that morning, to bring my wife some stuff. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Uh, I spoke with me. I stated I didn't know anything about a large trailer and two red four-wheelers. While I was there, I observed several fresh-looking scrapes and dents on the passenger side of his truck and on the tailgate. While I was taking photos of the truck, I noticed shoe prints next to the truck that appeared to be the exact same print that was at the scene. Photos were taken of the scene and of the truck. Okay, to stop right there, there are no photos in this discovery packet of, of any shoe prints or my truck or anything. So, I mean, I don't, I don't even know if these damn photos exist. I mean, if they do, I would like to see them and they're supposed to be disclosed, but whatever. Like, that, that really doesn't matter all that much. It's just something I thought was strange that they didn't include that in this discovery packet. All right. Oh. Also, with the truck. That's a truck I bought here. Before I moved here. Because, of course, I didn't have a car. I sold it for the down payment. So when I came down with my wife, I actually bought this truck. It's a 1996 Ford F-350. And... It had like 360,000 some odd fucking miles on it. So, I mean, it had been used a bit is, is what I'm trying to get at. So, yeah, it had some goddamn scratches and dents. And like I try to tell him, well, well, when he was asking about the dents, I said, well, shit. Yeah. Yeah, I, I dented it. I definitely put some dents in it. Because I was pulling down fucking pine trees with that goddamn thing here. Because I thought it'd be cool to make my daughter like a fort. Or a tree house or something. And since the truck was already beat up, I really didn't give a shit. It was like a work truck type thing, so who cares? I even showed them the damn trees that were on the damn ground that I had yanked over by the house, but... Anyway, moving on. Later contacted Ronald LaPlante, questioned him about the case. He stated he had been contacted on four different occasions by us, the Taylor County deputies, and did not know anything about the ATVs or the trailer that was found. Nobody in the other two houses in the residential area were ever in the military. LaPlante was the only resident on in the neighborhood, whatever, who had been in the military, not only in the military, but stationed at the exact base in which the four-wheelers were stolen. Okay. And I did, I was contacted like four different times by these guys. They would just show up randomly and ask me, hey, you know anything about these four-wheelers? You know anything about these four-wheelers? Hey, if they're your four-wheelers, just let us know. Because the towing company, they just want to get their money for towing the stuff. And you can have it. If it's your property, it's your property. Blah, blah, blah. Well, I kept telling them, okay, good. Uh, thank you. But it's not my property. I don't know anything about it. I'm not quite sure what else you want me to say. 
like I've told you the same thing like four different occasions now. Okay, so anyway. Uh, I was later contacted on the 17th of May, 2016, about the case by Lieutenant B. Lee. He stated that the four wheelers as well as the trailer was reported stolen off of the military base at Fort Benning. On 18th day of May, 2016, I made contact with the agents from Army CID. They stated both the four-wheelers and trailer were stolen from 4th Troop 1st 16th Cav, which is part of the 316th Cavalry Brigade. They stated that due to the fact that Ronald LaPlante was stationed at Fort Benning, he had access to the motor pool that was located at 316th Brigade, in which both the four-wheelers and trailer were stolen from. Ronald LaPlante's leave started in February, the same month that the four-wheelers and trailer were recovered. Due to the circumstantial evidence, charges will be filed for blah, 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 grand theft auto, fucking criminal mischief, fucking littering. Okay. Here's the thing. They were, they were taken... From Fort Benning, they were taken from the brigade I was in. So, yeah, I definitely understand the circumstantial type shit. But at the same time, Fort Benning has a population of what, about 107,000 goddamn people, which includes soldiers, family members, civilians that work there whatever but still you know what i can definitely see that i was in that brigade they were found somewhere here in perry so yeah i definitely understand the circumstantial type evidence but uh my transition leave was not february i was here in february on like a couple like short trips to bring my wife things, but I didn't actually sign out on transition leave until the 14th of March. Like that's when I was out, out Well, on, on transition leave, not technically retired yet, but it was March when I signed out on leave, which was when I was here like full time. Um, also this statement, uh, where was it? Uh, that Connor completed his his sworn statement about the trailer being pulled by a truck with four wheelers. Look at this thing. If I can get to it. Oh, that's in here somewhere. Jesus Christ. Here. Here is the sworn statement written by Connor. Uh, a teenage kid. Date of birth, 51002. Large trailer with two red four-wheelers. Um... Yep. That's, uh, that's the statement. Large trailer with two red four-wheelers. It's not even a goddamn complete sentence. Like, come on. Fuck me. And then they got my wife's statement in here. I, Rachel Plant, witnessed a man filling in holes in the dirt road this morning at 8.30 a.m. on February 17th. He had a beard and a shovel in his hand. That's all she put, because that's all she saw. So, whatever. So, yeah, good, they have this, too. So, oh, and then my sworn statement, <laughs> where I put, uh, 
I've been asked about four wheelers on four different occasions. I have no knowledge or claim on any vehicles of this type. And I put no claim because they kept saying, hey, if it's your property, you know, just just pay the towing company and, and you can have your property. It'll be done. Da, da, da. This is not my shit. So anyway, here, this is the discovery packet. And it, it says what's included. Included, here's uh, the notice to appear with the charges. The narrative completed by uh, Deputy Trace James, which I already went over. Uh, there's a picture that was taken of me at, uh, at the Perry Police Department, which is where I went to meet up with CID and Taylor County Sheriff's deputies because they wanted to talk to me. This is the probable cause uh, arrest affidavit. Count one, count two, count three, count four, blah, 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 saying I did some shit. So that was my uh, arrest warrant thingy, which I then in turn uh, ended up turning myself in to the, I went down to the uh, jail, turned myself in. And uh, had to spend the night in jail. Here's the charges again. Because reasons. Here's the narrative. Exact same one again. Because uh, I don't know. Uh, here's the arrest warrant once again. Probable cause. Uh, uh, because you know. Uh, this. This. Uh, this is their vehicle storage form that they filled out. It just says like trailer, four wheelers, Ricky Bobby's motherfucking towing. Uh, here's the pictures of the light four wheelers. It said it in here somewhere like that there was attached pictures of like four wheelers from the internet or some shit. It's on one of these papers. Yeah, who cares? Anyway, I guess couldn't be bothered to take pictures of the actual stuff, so they just pulled up something on the internet. Yeah, whatever. Um, this is the same. No, this is not the same. What is this? In reference to this case, I contacted Ronald Plant, question about the Casey State. He had been contacted four different occasions by Taylor County Sheriff's deputies. Did not know anything about ATVs, trailers, spoke with them three out of the four times about this case. I had dispatch from, okay, this is just his, uh, like his incident report. This case is considered inactive. This is when, I guess, he started, like, calling around to try and find out where these damn things came from or what the hell. All right. Uh, more of the incident report stuff. And the same, another copy of the incident report. That amazing sworn statement. My wife's mine. Uh, this is my booking thing from the jail. I guess because I don't know evidence that I turned myself in. Fuck, I don't know. And this, of course, is another copy of the probable cause arrest warrant. Because I mean, in case in case you didn't see the first fucking four of these in here in this packet. Might as well if I can throw in another one. Uh, Pre-trial release crap this is when uh, I bonded out of jail. Oh, and in case you didn't notice the first five arrest warrants or however many there are, I didn't even count, but 
Here's another one. Because I guess, you know, if you put in multiple copies of the same goddamn thing, I don't know, maybe it makes it more believable. Uh, uh, th this is this is definitely not a photograph of Ronald LaPlante. I, I'm not quite that black. Not quite. Uh, maybe on the inside, but... Um, another thing of the, the booking shit from the jail, and I, I don't know, my blackness is showing, I guess. But, yeah, another copy of that. Uh, insurance. Oh, this is, uh, this is my, uh, bond sheet thingy. Uh, the bail bondsman. That's what it is. And again, Taylor County Jail. In case you didn't see the first four. Uh, pre-trial release. Pretty sure this was already in there as well. Rights and responsibilities. Declining public defender. Because I'm paying for my own lawyer. Because I can definitely afford that on this huge retirement check I'm getting. This is a memorandum done by CID uh, to document our meeting. Like, because anyone in the military knows, you know, whenever you talk to somebody about something, like something official, you need to at least do a memorandum just so there's a record. So uh, this is what it is. Uh, yeah, the offense, the vehicles, larceny, government property, Dates and times, uh, shit, whatever, investigated by, whatever. So, subjects slash suspects, me. Uh, here's the gist of what happened at our, our meeting. On 18 May, 2016, uh, Sergeant LaPlante and his wife, Miss Rachel LaPlante, 31, 38, Mondex and Road, Perry, Florida, were interviewed. Staff Sergeant LaPlante denied he stole the ATVs or trailer and subsequently requested an attorney. Miss LaPlante denied any knowledge of the stolen ATVs or trailer and alluded that unit personnel framed her husband by traveling from Fort Benning, Georgia to Perry, Florida and placing the ATVs and trailer in the canal near their home. An arrest warrant was issued for me by Taylor County Circuit Judge. I was arrested and confined in the jail. Investigation continues. And then blah, 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 notified by Highway Patrol that some shit was found and then found out it was their shit and stuff. Uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. Reviews. Colonel Plains military records revealed he retired from active duty 1 May 2016. Investigation continues. Uh, stuff. And, yep. So, really, all that says is I talked to them, and my wife talked to them. I said, I didn't know anything about these fucking things. What I actually said. They asked me about it, and what I actually said was, one second. They said something along the lines of, so tell us about these four-wheelers, or, or something like that. And I said, well... I will tell you exactly what I told the deputies on like four different occasions. I don't know anything about some four wheelers. So like, I don't know what you want. Like, what else do you want? And then it turned into like the whole, well, 
Well, come on. Come on now. They were from your unit. And you know that we know. That you know that we know. That you took that shit. Or some bullshit. And they're like, just, you know, come on. Go ahead and just tell us. Let's just, let's just get this over with. Just, you know, tell us what happened. Blah, blah, blah. So, of course, I said, well. I can tell you. I don't know anything about some damn four-wheelers or a trailer or whatever. And if you want anything more than that from me, I'm going to need a lawyer. So then he was like, he knew what was coming. He was like, so, so what are you saying then? And I was like, oh, okay. I, I know what he wants. I need to say the specific words. Um, I want an attorney. And then that was it. Bam. So, okay. Well, interviews concluded, blah, blah, blah at time, whatever the fuck. And then they took my picture and fingerprints and yep, that was that. And then later that day, I ended up turning myself into the jail. <clears throat> so, so that's where I am now. Well, not in jail, but Okay, so here's some other stuff. Uh, the lawyer, the lawyer was at my lawyer was actually saying, uh, you know, and I need what I need is is like an an alternative theory here. Like, how did this happen? How could it have happened? Like. Uh, do you think somebody from your unit could have done it? Or did you have any friends visit you or, or anything like that? And I said, no. No one's come to visit me. I wanted to move out here in the middle of nowhere, like, to not have visitors. Just be left alone. Not that I wouldn't like some people to visit, but I've had no fucking visitors. And no, I don't think someone from the unit would have done this. My wife... Yeah, she said maybe someone from the unit did it because all the shit I caused about my retirement packets being lost over and over and over and over. But I don't think so. I think that's her paranoia. But what I'm wondering now, I'm wondering if when I talk to the neighbor in October when I was shooting a gun, and I explained I was from Benning. We just bought this place, et cetera, et cetera. I wonder if word went around to the family members here that used to own this property, this chunk right in the middle of their property, the rest of their property. And maybe they had something to do with this. I don't know that I would give them that much credit because I'm pretty sure they're all related. I'm pretty sure they're all a bunch of like brother and sister fuckers and stuff. I, I don't know, but maybe, who knows? And I, I'm also wondering if what my wife saw that morning wasn't, wasn't the guy fixing the road. I'm wondering if it was the guy putting marks into the dirt road because the, the marks stopped. I guess, but like, according to Deputy James, the mark stopped at the entrance to like the small residential area where there was like three houses. The marks didn't go all the way to any one sp specific house. So now I'm wondering, maybe this fucking guy was putting the marks in the road when my wife saw him and maybe he couldn't get any further. I don't know. I really don't know. But what also makes me wonder is it's obvious that they're not happy that we moved in here. Um, my wife ended up with two flat tires. Don't know how, can't prove anything. 
our mailbox was torn off uh, the post outside at the road, which the police got called about that. But of course, again, no proof. Like we know it, well, no proof. Um, and then also another funny thing is here. This, this is the notice to appear that arrived in the mail. <clears throat> uh, said my next court date. Well, motion to appear 711. That's coming up, but uh, there's this right here. This is telling me that I needed to appear June 13th in court. Well, luckily, I didn't have to because my lawyer went for me and he said I didn't have to go. And that's good because I never would have seen this on time. First of all, this says, this is your notice to appear on June 13th. Here's the envelope. The damn thing is postmarked June 7th, which is fine. It would give me a week, right? My wife actually pulled this letter out of our mailbox that we had to put back up. Um, when she pulled it out, it was already open. Again, can't prove it, but it was already open. She brought it up, showed me. I looked at it and I said, well, what the fuck? This wouldn't do me any good. And then I looked at the postmark and it said the seventh, which I thought was funny because my wife brought this to me on the 21st, two weeks after it was postmarked. But definitely with enough time for me to miss this goddamn date. So I guess they figured, you know what, fuck, now we'll just put it in the mailbox because he's probably missed that date. Now he's probably in more trouble or some shit. I mean, again, can't prove it, but this did show up two weeks. I mean, this showed up in our mailbox two weeks after it was fucking postmarked. Well after the time I was supposed to appear. And it was already open. So, <sighs> whatever. <clears throat> uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Well, this has turned into a long fucking video. I didn't mean to drag it out this much, but I kind of want to put everything out there. Um, oh, and then also keep in mind, up until I signed out on leave in March, I was still going to work every fucking day. I did make a couple trips down here. Shit. A couple trips down here and back to bring stuff, but I was still going to work. So I'm not, I'm not quite sure when the hell they expected I'd just be running into the motor pool to, I don't know, do this craziness and then come down here to do this fucking craziness, but, but whatever. So now I'm, I'm stuck here. I'm stuck here, I don't know, the, the 11th of July is the motion day, 9 a.m. Pre-trials on the 18th of July, and then no trial date, just sometime in August, I guess. So now I'm stuck here waiting for this shit to get resolved. Hoping it will get resolved so I can move up to Michigan with my wife and get away from these fucking people down here. So basically, uh, that's the, that's the story of my retirement. It's fucking amazing so far. Not really. 
But I wanted there to be some kind of record of the bullshit. Just in case I fuck around and lose it. And fucking snap. Because I'm fucking getting pretty sick of this shit. And you know this actually gives a... This actually gives a really good movie a little bit more meaning for me. And that's uh, Rambo, First Blood. I'm not saying I'm fucking Rambo or anything. I'm just saying this dude got out of the military after war, wanted to just go see some friends, wanted to go get some motherfucking food, and started getting fucked with by some fucking hillbilly fucking hick sheriff fucking motherfuckers in some little fucking hillbilly incest fucking town. And he tried to tell him, like, I just want to get something to eat. Why are you pushing me? Why are you fucking with me? And you know what? I feel it. I can feel that, dude. I understand. Not saying I'm Rambo or going to do any shit like, I don't know, like he did at the end of the movie. I'm just saying, I understand. Thanks for watching. And if you're one of the people here in this fucking town, which I've heard a lot of corrupt stories about the local government officials, a lot of stories, which they're just stories. Don't know if they're true or not. If you're one of those people watching, you can go fuck yourself. Or you can come on out to my fucking house and you can talk to me about this fucking shit man to man, one on one. I'm here all by my lonesome. You can load up your pickup trucks with all your hillbilly fucking friends and come on over, pay me a visit. Thank you.